Today I'm going to show you how to approach explanation and counseling. Want to improve your consultation skills? You have clicked on the right video. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Erwin Kwan. My mission is to help doctors lead a happy and fulfilling life. I publish new video every Thursday on the subject of happiness and success. If you've not already subscribed to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you're notified first each time I release a new video. Imagine yourself being asked to explain a procedure to a patient, interpret results of an investigation, or give a new diagnosis to a patient. How will you proceed? It is important to approach explanation and counseling with a structure in mind. We can break the task into three stages. First stage involves taking a brief history. This helps you to assess the level of knowledge of your patient. It is vital to elicit what symptoms have led to the investigations. Remember to explore idea, concerns, and expectation. The second stage is reviewing the results of the investigation in context with the information you have gathered. Use analogy or diagram to facilitate patient's understanding. Lastly, the third stage is explaining to the patient about the implications of the results, diagnosis, risks versus benefits of a procedure. Give opportunities for questions from the patient. Check understanding. Use patient's ideas, concern, and expectation to tie in your management. Make a follow plan. Let's go through three different cases to help you get a better understanding. Here's an instruction for case one. Mr. Smith, age 60, needs to go for a sigmoidoscopy. Please explain the procedure. It's important to start by introducing yourself and confirming you have the right patient. Then you may proceed by explaining the reason for the consultation. Use open questions to assess patient's current state of knowledge. What do you know about sigmoidoscopy, Mr. Smith? The explanation you give depends on Mr. Smith's prior knowledge. For a patient with a great degree of knowledge of the procedure, you don't need to explain as much as for a patient who doesn't know anything about a sigmoidoscopy. It is important to explore patient's ideas, concern, and expectation. Once you have gathered a brief history, you can explain what the procedure involved. Use lay term and avoid jargons. How will you describe a sigmoidoscopy to a lay person? Think about it. It is a test that involves the use of a telescopic camera to have a look down the back passage and the bottom part of the colon. Some doctors may draw a diagram of the sigmoid colon to illustrate their points. The test takes a few minutes. You will be asked to lie on your left side with your knees drawn up towards the chest. Generally, there is no need for anesthetics or sedation. This is a simple late-term explanation of the procedure and it doesn't take much time. You also need to explain the patient any preparation they need to be aware of before the procedure. For instance, it is important to clear your bowel before the procedure. You will be given details to take strong laxatives on the day before the procedure. Make sure you also inform patient of the risks of the procedure. Most sigmoidoscopies are done without problems, Mr. Smith. After the procedure, some people may experience cramps and excess wind. Occasionally, sigmoidoscopy may cause complication. Although these are not common, there's a small risk of bleeding, infection, and damage to the colon and rectum. If the patient then asks you, what is the risk of bleeding and you don't know? Be honest. Tell the patient, I'm not sure, but I can find out from the colorectal consultant for you. Avoid giving a monologue. Make the explanation interactive. It is important to give information in chunks and check patient's understanding. After giving three to five chunks of information, give the patient an opportunity to ask questions. Let me give you an example. Would you like me to go over anything that might not be clear, Mr. Smith? This is a good opportunity for the patient to clarify anything they've not understood. The second case involves interpreting a report and discuss the management with the patient. You have received the gastroscopy report of Mrs. Jones, age 55. The report has shown a small duodenal ulcer caused by H. pylori infection. Please discuss the report and start appropriate treatment. In this scenario, we need to explain the diagnosis and treatment to the patient. Start by taking a brief history to help you understand what happened before the gastroscopy. Before we discuss the report of your endoscopy, could you tell me what led to the test, Mrs. Jones? This allows the patient to tell you all about the symptoms they have experienced. Thank the patient for going over the symptoms. You might say, thank you, Mrs. Jones. This is helpful to put the results in context. 
make sure you also check for risk factors. Sometimes our habits can worsen the symptoms of indigestion. May I ask if you smoke? May I ask if you drink alcohol or caffeinated drinks? It is important to assess these risk factors, particularly in duodenal also. Once you have gathered a brief history, you can interpret the investigations and discuss a report with the patient. The report has shown you have an ulcer in the lining of the small intestine. This is caused by a germ known as Helicobacter pylori. Have you heard of that? Would you like to know what are the treatments? Once you have explained the diagnosis and given the opportunity to ask questions, you may proceed to management. Don't jump into medical management. Consider lifestyle modification. Advise patients about any triggers. They might have told you that they drink a lot of caffeinated drinks or spicy food, so they can avoid these triggers. Eating habits also encompasses lifestyle changes. Make sure that the patient is eating three to four hours before going to bed. Smoking cessation is very important, reducing alcohol consumption. Once you have gone through these lifestyle modifications, you may want to discuss a medical management. We can easily get rid of the germ with medication. This includes a combination of two different antibiotics to kill the germ and a medication to reduce the acid in your stomach. It is important to complete the eradication therapy for a week. It is important to explain to patients the medications, what they do and how to take them. Warn patients about relevant side effects. Make sure you have a follow-up plan. If patients still have symptoms despite the treatment, you want to see them again. Advise them to return if symptoms are persistent. The last case is slightly more challenging. The instructions you're given is, Mrs. Lewis, age 25, is newly diagnosed of epilepsy. Please explain the diagnosis and treatment. A new diagnosis of epilepsy in a childbearing age woman can come as a shock to the patient. This scenario requires an ability to break bad news sensitively. It is important to consider the implications of such a diagnosis on the patient's life. You need to ask about occupation and hobbies, whether the patient is planning to start a family or is on contraception. How will you explain epilepsy in one sentence? Epilepsy is a disorder that causes repeated seizures. You need to think about the implications and the impacts on the patient's life. Driving is a big one. With a new diagnosis of epilepsy, a patient needs to inform the DVLA, and a patient is not able to drive. If the patient is seizure-free for at least a year, they can reapply for the driving license. Depending on the occupation of the patient, if the patient is a bus driver, a lorry driver, the restrictions are more stringent. You need to be aware of the effects of anti-epileptic drugs on contraception. Some antiepileptic drugs such as carbamazepine, phenobarbital, and phenytoin are liver enzyme inducers that decrease the effectiveness of contraception. If the patient usually swims or takes bath, there's a risk that if they develop a seizure while in a bath or while they're swimming, it can be potentially fatal. They need to be aware of this risk and they need to inform their family members and take the precautionary measures. Delivering a life-changing diagnosis to a patient requires sensitivity. To get better at it, you need practice and repetition. I've made a video on breaking bad news where I cover the SPACs framework in depth. Click on breaking bad news video if you want to learn how to deliver a life-changing diagnosis. If you want to learn about ideas, concern, and expectation, watch the video on the right. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it useful, don't forget to drop a like and if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe and ring the bell. I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.